After you have successfully installed the JD Marketplace app, you can find it underneath your sales channel section of your Shopify admin. So you can click on JD Marketplace and you want to go to the overview section, which is the homepage for JD Marketplace. The next step is to scroll down and find the register JD account now button to click. So once you've clicked that, you will have the corporate account registration pop up in a new window. And if it doesn't pop up for you, you should make sure that your pop up blocker is not blocking this page from opening. You may need to change your settings and this registration process works best in Google Chrome. So the first thing you want to do for the registration is to add your phone number and then click obtain verification code. You'll need to swipe to complete the puzzle and this is just checking to make sure you're human. Sometimes you may need to do it a few times. So once you receive the verification code, which you'll get a text message to the phone number that you input, you can continue to fill out the information and you can set your username. and create a password. And you'll want to remember this login information because you will need to re-log into your JD account and you'll also want to save it for a later step in your store setup process when you might work with a third-party service partner that may need to go into your account and help you beautify your store. When completing your account registration, there will be four main steps that you can see here at the top. And as you move through the progress, your progress will be tracked at the top of the page. So the first thing you want to do is read this merchant standard and registration specification of JD Worldwide. And to read this, you just need to click on the link and then you can scroll through this document and make sure you agree with the, the terms. Once you've read through the document, you can check register as a seller, which will allow you to launch an independent shop on JD.com. And then when you're ready, you can click next. In the next section, you'll need to provide the information of whoever is registering the account. So you can just put in your contact name. Your phone number should have already been pulled over from your initial registration step, step and then you can enter in your email address and click next when you're ready. The next step in the registration process is to provide some key company information. So first you want to write your company name. And for business license, we require legal proof of business that has been signed by the legal representative or the business owner we accept a scanned copy or a photo of the business registration, business license, or business certificate. I know in the US, it can go by a few different names, but we just need to see that there is legal proof of business. So you'll need to enter in the license number or registration number or certificate number. And upload your scanned copy or photo. Once that uploads, you should just see a smaller version of it there and you, you'll know that you have successfully completed this step. As for the name of the legal representative, this is whoever has registered the business and their name should be on the documents. As for the legal representative ID number, we accept a passport or driver's license number. So you'll just have to put down the relevant number and if you're uploading your passport, we would want to see the, the passport information page. And if you're using a driver's license, please upload a photo of the front and back of the license. And then you'll want to select which country your business is registered in and also include the address that's listed in the business license. You'll also want to provide the issue date and the date of expiry. However, if there's no expiry date listed on your legal proof of business, you can click long-term 
and please make sure that the dates do match up with the dates in the photo of the document that you have uploaded, otherwise there may be an issue with your application acceptance. Next, you'll just need to provide the company phone number and the emergency contact of the company. Once you've filled out all of the information, you can click next to go on to the next section. Next, you will be asked to provide an after sales address in China. So this is an address for product returns. This is legally necessary to do business in China, but if you don't have one right now, don't worry. You can just select no and click next to move on with your application. If you select no at this step, then when your application has been submitted and approved, JD will offer you some recommendations for third party local agencies in China that can provide you with this type of address and will help you with the after sale service. Now you will need to provide your bank account information and the account name should be pulled over from your earlier registration steps and you can just re-enter in your company name and the bank name of deposit, for example, Bank of America, and select the address of the bank deposit from the drop-down menu and then enter in your account number and the SWIFT code of the bank. Each bank will have a unique SWIFT code and the SWIFT code is necessary for international wire transfers. You can usually find the SWIFT code on your bank's website or by Googling it or by calling your bank. And the SWIFT code will look something like this. This is Bank of America's general SWIFT code. And you'll also need to provide your routing number. You can also provide the address of your company again that matches the address in your bank statements. And then select the country code for the bank deposit from the drop down menu. So after you've filled out all of this information, you will need to click this link to download the settlement information collection form template. And when you download this form, it will download as a PDF document. And when you open it back up, you can double check all of the information that you have just filled in. And you'll need to sign and date the bottom of this form. I know this says official seal of execution party and in China, it's very common for businesses to use an official seal, but I know it's not as common in the US, so it's totally fine if you just sign and date the bottom of this form. And to sign and date it, please print out the form and then sign it by hand and re-upload the form into the system. So when you re-upload the form, please make sure it's in a picture format. So it downloads as a PDF, but then when you print it out and rescan it or re-upload it, please make sure it's in a picture format. And if your form is still in a PDF, you can export the file to one of these types of picture formats before you re-upload it. Once you see that your form has been uploaded, you can click next to move on. In the next step, you'll need to provide your shop information. And the first thing you need to do is fill in your shop name. Then you'll want to select the brands that you're selling in your shop. And to do that, click add brand. And you can either create a new brand or you can search for the brand in our database. And if the brand is already being sold in China, then it will likely be in our brand database. So you can just search for the brand name. However, if this is a new brand that is not sold in China, then you will need to create a new brand. I will show you how to do both types of adding a brand, but first I'll create a new brand. So you'll want to input the brand name and the brand trademark owner. And you'll need to select your relationship with the brand. And you'll also need to provide a certificate that states that you're legally able to sell or resell this brand. So typically brand owners will upload a trademark certificate and resellers or distributors will upload a customs declaration. And for this customs declaration, you can also upload an invoice from the brand. You'll also want to fill in a valid until date 
that matches the date in the photo that you have uploaded. And it's very important that these dates match up, otherwise your application may be rejected and you'll have to go back and edit this information. When creating a new brand, you will also need to upload your brand logo. And here, it's very important to make sure that the image size is 102 by 36 pixels and less than 30 KB. You'll also need to upload a picture of external product packaging and here the image size needs to be 800 by 800 pixels. And you may need to spend some time resizing the photos to make sure that they will upload correctly. And you can do this with different tools, but if you open up, if you're using a Mac, you can open up the photo and go to tools and then go click resize the photo. So once your photos are uploaded, you can click next and you will need to also select the category of your brand. It's very important in this section to be accurate when selecting the categories because this will impact how your, how your products are searched for on JD.com and what sections that they will appear in. So once you're okay with this information, you can click save. And if we are to go back and, and you'll see the brand saved when you've done this correctly. So if we want to go back and add another brand and search for a brand, say we're selling a brand already sold in China, like Nike, then you can search for this brand and the brand name will show up and the logo will already be uploaded. And what you can do is click add. So then once you've added this new brand, you'll see your different brands that you're selling at the top here, and you can toggle between the different brands. So here, you will also need to select the category and click Submit. And then here, you will also need to select your relationship with the brand. And again, upload the brand certificate. So this can be a trademark certificate or a customs declaration or an invoice from the brand. And then be sure to input the valid until date and make sure that this date matches the date on the document that you've uploaded. And if this brand is already in our system, then you don't need to worry about adding a logo, but you will need to still upload a photo of the external product packaging. And then you can click save to save the brand. And once you see this brand saved, then you're good to go. And you, the next thing that you need to do is select the main category for your shop. So I'll select footwear and popular men's shoes. And it's, again, these categories are important because it will impact how your brand is searched for and how it ranks on JD. In the next section, you'll just need to review the registration, qualifications, and fees. At the moment, there is no platform service fee and there will be no deposit. There will only be a commission fee based on what product category you're selling. So you can click next to move on to the next section. The final step in your application process is to review these two different documents. So the first document is a platform shop service agreement between you and JD.HK. So you can carefully read through this document and once you're ready, select that you've read the document and move on to the next agreement. This next document is an agreement between you and JD Logistics and this document is necessary because JD Logistics will be responsible for transporting your products and your orders from our US warehouse in California to the end customer in China. So again, you can just scroll through this document and make sure you're okay with the terms and then select that you have read the document and you can submit. Once you have submitted your application, you will receive this congratulations message so you know that your application process was successful and our team will approve your application within five working days and if there's an issue with your application you will also receive an email letting you know that you can go in and make changes and if you have any questions you can always email us at support.channel at jd.com